Well, 45 ethnic groups, 30,000 kilometers. And that's just uh, some of what photographer and author Eniko Nagy covered while working on a new exhibition about daily life in Sudan. Nagy spent nine months traveling alone across Sudan, photographing and documenting the visual and spoken moments of the country's people. And her exhibition, hosted in London by the SOAS University, finds beauty in the mundane and hopes to offer a fresh perspective on Sudan. I went to Sudan in 2006 uh, working as a development worker and I did that for two and a half years and after that uh, instead of returning back I decided to stay and to write a book and that book wanted to be about um, Sudanese-ness, about what people think about life, what they say about their life philosophy. This is, this is composed uh, by things we see and by the things they say. So I set out to collect moments in daily life, visual moments and spoken moments. The spoken moments are traditional narratives like uh, proverbs, um, folk tales, um, poems, songs, um, blessings, ritual texts, whatever people use in their daily life. And the photography are daily moments, those uh, mundane moments which normally are never newsworthy, but which I believe that they, they are very telling of who a people is and, and what they do. The exhibition goes through a day in Sudan across its different cultures, uh, starting from dawn till the late night. And um, I was basically traveling and asking people, the different people I met with their different lifestyles, what they consider the most typical for themselves. I traveled 30,000 kilometers and I um, documented photography and tr traditional narratives from all together 45 tribes and ethnic groups and they are indeed very very different and diverse um, and they all have their own little share of Sudan still when you put them together there are things which match things which they have in common and, and I think that's because people naturally influence one another if they live close by so there is some sudanese between them which, which flickers out through that diversity and sometimes it recedes and hides there is a narrative that African countries are poor and need help and it's such, it's a paradigm so widespread that um, people in many African countries have bought into it. I think that's not fair because it's based on coverage that deals only with news and, and um, we've also had conflicts and poverty in the past in the different European countries we live in but that's not everything that defines us. I believe it's the people who define a place and that's why um, every country deserves uh, to be known for the most beautiful in, in their people and for that what, for example, Sudan contributes to the world, which is wisdom, which is beautiful, intangible world heritage, songs, dances, daily life, teachings, humor, and all the other human things that we would otherwise not know.